I'll show you how I made this garden bench from Ipe wood. It's a great wood for this project besides the fact that it looks amazing. It holds up really great outdoors. It's commonly used for decking. It's a really hard and dense wood, perhaps a bit difficult to work with, so I tried just about every tool you could think to throw at it. I jointed it, resawed it, planed it, routered it, sanded it, drilled it, screwed it, glued it, used just about every kind of saw I could think of, and even nailed it. I'll show you what worked well and what didn't. So let's get started. I've created the design of the bench so I can cut all of the legs and frame the ends of the bench from a single piece of 2x6, 8 feet long. I got all of the EPA I'm using for this project from a local ducking supply store and the 1x6s were just off the shelf in stock deck boards. But this 2x6 was special order and it's a pretty expensive piece of wood. And right off the bat, I screw up the mark on the first angle cut by quarter inch and I think, no problem, I'll just adjust the saw guide rail by quarter an inch and make the cut. And then I realize I compounded the screw up. My mark was only off by quarter inch at one end and not the other. So I got lucky on this one, cutting it too big and not too small. So I'm able to make a second cut and get it right. I was a little nervous about my little battery powered circular saw with this hard EPE, but it really had no problem at all. And even though it produced a pretty clean cut, I still cleaned up the edge on the joiner and then sanded both pieces to be exactly the same. I'm making use of the rip fence on the bandsaw to cut the inside edges of the crook, leaving just the inside corner to cut without the fence. I tried cutting one of the inside corners with the bandsaw and then I used the jigsaw on the other one just to see what happened. So the bandsaw cuts this hard EPE wood with no problem at all, but the jigsaw didn't do great. Like I think the blade just got too hot and kind of started burning and smoking and didn't give a good result. And then I sanded the edges of both pieces just to make sure they were identical. It's kind of slow going. This stuff doesn't sand very quickly. Making use of the cutoff from the last cut on the bandsaw, I'm able to create the cross members. The plans call for a large radius curve, kind of mirror the curve of the seat bench. <laughs> and yeah, there's probably a better way to mark this large radius, but this is what I came up with on the fly. Then it's just an easy cut on the bandsaw and back to the sander. And then after cutting the front legs to width on the table saw, it's time to drill some holes for the dowels. There are a lot of dowels on this project and I'm going to use several different approaches to mark and drill the holes depending on the location and alignment as you'll see later in the video. But for these frames I'm just using this simple dowel jig. These types of jigs work really good on 3 quarter inch thick wood, but with this one and a half inch thick, it's a little hard to get it matched up and the lines just right. But making use of some sunlight and holding it back so my old man eyes can see it, I was able to make it work. Just getting all the corners and the edge radiuses done before glue up. I normally like to have flush joints, but in this particular design, I think it'll look better to have the edge radius go through the joints. I'm not sure. We'll see how it looks. I'm using a piece of scrap wood that's cut to the exact same length as the cross members, just helping make sure everything is straight and square as I glue it up. So that was the only piece of 2x in the whole project. Everything else I'm going to make from these 1x6 deck boards that I got in stock at the local decking supply company. A total of 5 pieces, 8 feet long each. And note that the wood I bought was labeled as sustainable and legally harvested, which is important. I guess there are some illegally harvested ipe out there. Something to be aware of and try to avoid for sure. I'm just breaking it down with the miter saw and table saw, same as I would on any project. And even though it's three times the hardness of white oak or maple, at least according to the Jenka rating scale, my tools made pretty easy work of it. Nice clean cuts and really no burning. This is the frame for the backrest of the bench. And again, I'm just going to use this simple doweling jig. Much easier on the three quarter inch thick wood to get the lines all matched up.
The glue up is pretty straightforward. I did make use of some double sided woodworker's tape and some of the 45 degree cutoffs to help with the clamping of the angled pieces. So with some light sanding of the joints after the glue is dry, then the back support frame is complete. Here I'm just drilling the dowel holes to attach the back support to the side frame pieces. As I'm drilling the holes on the side frame, I offset the jig a little bit so that when the rails and slats are installed that the finished assembly sits in the center of the frame. So I want the slats on the backrest to be much thinner, about only 3 8 of an inch thick, which will help make the overall bench not so heavy than if I would have used the full 3 quarter inch thickness. So I just take these standard side stacking boards and resaw them in half on the bandsaw. And note that this is not a special bandsaw blade, it's just a normal $10 blade. It's not carbide or anything like that. And it really has no problem at all cutting through this hard Ipe wood. So then I just run them through the planer to clean up the rough edge and get them all the same thickness. I end up with a final thickness of about 5 16 of an inch, which will work fine. With the use of my router table, I'm putting a 45 degree camphor on the edges of all the slats. These boards are a little too thin to trust the bearing on the router bit itself, so I set up the fence as a guide. And also with the use of the fence, I can use the feather boards, which just makes it easier to run the whole stack of boards through pretty quickly and stress free. I didn't really think of an elegant way to lay out and cut the back slats. This is kind of a lot of work and a meticulous approach, just laying out, marking, and cutting one by one. As I get each one cut, then I stick it down with double-sided tape just to temporarily hold it in place while I measure and cut the next one. I started at the center and worked outwards just to do my best to have everything centered properly. And for all the simple straight pieces, I did use a stop block on the miter saw just to cut them all the same length. So I did the glue up in two steps. First I attached the top and bottom rails, clamped them, and let them dry overnight. And before doing the slaps, I used some painter's tape to help control the glue drips and make the cleanup a little bit easier. I'm using an 18 gauge brad nailer to hold them in place. Really the strength will come from the glue, but the brad nail is just a simple way of providing some clamping pressure till the glue sets. I was a little bit nervous trying to nail this hard Ipe wood, afraid it might split or crack or maybe even just bend the brad nails, but it worked really good, no problems at all. I'm using this Starbond dark brown color CA glue, just trying to hide the nail holes as best as possible. Moving on to make the seat of the bench. So I want the seat to have an ergonomic curve to it and make it a comfortable place to sit. And I employed the same highly suspicious and random curve generator as on the cross members. It might be a good time to note that these white chalk pencils don't work very well at all on Ipe. It seems like the oils in the wood or something clogs up the chalk. So after getting one of them to the shape I want, then I cut the other two. And then I do a final shaping with all three stuck together.
Before assembling the seat frame, I want to get the dowel holes drilled to attach the seat frame to the end frame pieces. After using my go-to dowel jig to drill the holes in the frame, then I need to take a different approach to mark and drill the corresponding holes in the seat frame pieces. I'm making use of these centering pins to mark the hole locations. And with the help of this little jig to help keep the drill straight, I'm able to drill the matching dowel holes pretty easily. Okay, something to be aware of if you're going to get these centering pins online. If you're working in imperial sizes, that is 3 eighths of an inch and not 10 millimeters, is to get pins that are truly 3 eighths of an inch. I found that the majority of them for sale on Amazon are actually metric. They may be labeled as imperial sizes in the title if you live in the United States, but if you look closely, they're really metric. And note that 10 millimeter is just slightly larger than 3 eighths of an inch and the pin simply doesn't fit in the hole. I know because I accidentally bought the wrong ones and had to later go back and buy a different set that actually worked. I'll leave a link in the description to the ones that I found that are actually truly imperial sizes. I'm using screws to assemble the seat frame. These are stainless steel deck screws, which might not be the strongest choice, but I've heard there's a risk of normal steel screws turning the Ipe wood green over time. But all the joints are also being glued, so it should add plenty of strength to make up for the stainless steel screws. And just to be safe, I add in a few extra support blocks. So while the glue's drying on that, I take a bit of a diversion to put an epoxy pad on the bottom of all the legs. Seems like a good idea for any outdoor furniture, just in case it ends up sitting in the snow or water that that end grain doesn't soak it up too much. I also think the epoxy pad is a bit softer than the ingrain wood and a bit friendlier to avoid scratching your deck if you drag it around. And after it's dry the next day, I'm just cleaning up the edges. At this point I've done some sanding and I put an eighth inch radius on all the seat stretchers and now I'm just pre-drilling the countersink holes. Using the stainless steel deck screws and some glue, it's just a matter of screwing each one in with a consistent spacing. So that's a lot of countersunk screw holes to fill with some plugs. I'm using this tapered plug cutter and it takes a few tries to get the depth of cut just right so it fits snug but doesn't bottom out on the top of the head, the screw head. On my test piece I tried just cutting off the plug with a Japanese handsaw but I'm thinking that's a lot of work for so many plugs that I need to do. So I'm going to take a different approach. So after drilling a lot of hole plugs, then I take it over to the bandsaw using some blue tape to hold the plugs in place. Then I just cut them all to the right length. So these plugs fit snugly, they don't bottom out on the screw head, and they leave just enough proud of the surface to avoid having to cut each one before sanding them down flush. The final assembly is a bit complicated and I need to get it all together and clamped within the working time of the glue, and I'm pretty nervous about managing such a large piece myself. But I thought through the steps carefully and I'm laser focused on executing the plan that I've rehearsed in my head dozens of times. But through the whole process I'm feeling really cramped and just wishing I had a larger space to work in. But I'm so laser focused on assembling this thing that I completely forgot to just open up the garage door and give myself more space. I feel like such an idiot. Oh, 
Of course, I think about it the next day and open up the garage door when I'm taking the clamps off, and I just have to sit down and reflect for a moment. So these joints on the front corners will carry a lot of weight as well as some shear stress. Some people put corbels here to stabilize the bench. I'm thinking a cleaner design is nice and I believe that just gluing in some beefy blocks should give enough strength to hold it pretty well. I'm using double sided tape to stick both arms together so that I can cut and shape them both at the same time. And one last use of the dowel jig on this project. And then I use the dowel alignment pins to mark the matching holes on the frame. With the use of these intermediate blocks on the front legs, I'm able to hide the screws and create a nice looking mount for the arms. After getting this thing back up onto the workbench, I'm using this T-coil as a finish. No stain, this is just the natural dark color of the EPA wood. Thanks so much for watching.